All right, let's take the uh, Corsair Cessna up for a pattern. The starting engine uh, procedure is pretty simple. It's the main battery master to the on position. Key goes to the main position. The reefy does a self-check diagnostic procedure for about four seconds. It primes the pumps, also looks for any faults. We make sure that there's no faults enunciated on the SCD and our warning lamps are what they should be. In this case, we have a low oil pressure in the charging system lamp, which should uh, extinguish once the engine's operating. Then all it takes is a push of the start button. After engine start, we make sure the lights are out and there's no faults enunciated on the SCD. And that completes the after start checklist. We're gonna pull up here. I'm actually uh, not using an external mic. I'm just using the microphone on our GoPro that's suction cupped to our windows. So you can see that the aircraft's pretty quiet compared to some of the other legacy uh, piston aircraft. We'll go up here and we'll perform our before takeoff checklist. two engine checks before takeoff that are required. Uh, the first one is checking of the auxiliary system. The aux ignition system is designed as a backup system should the main system fail. Typically we do this while we're taxiing because it's not very distracting. So we typically have the RPMs about 1100 or so uh, during the taxi. And to test that all we do is we take the key from the main and select the aux position. What that does is it depowers and isolates the main system for a brief for a brief second as the engine control gets transferred to the aux system. You might notice the engine dies a little bit for about a fraction of a second during that transfer, but comes right back to normal operating. We have initiated a fault in the aux system, so you can see what the SED would enunciate if there is a fault. So let's give it a shot. We're taking the key from the main position and we're selecting aux. Notice the engine died for just a brief second, but came right back up. We have an aux fuel pump lamp steadily illuminated, meaning that the aux pump has been commanded on normally. And this is what a fault will look like on the SED. It'll either be a yellow or a red annunciation. Red for critical, yellow for more of a cautionary. It gives a brief description of the fault in this case it's the low oil level sensor and it also gives a specific fault code that we can look up later in a checklist and our engine service manual to erase it we just push the button with the bell on it and we can go right back and it is stored in the maintenance page for after landing for the maintenance folks to take a look at we then switch back to the main system same thing happens the engine dies for just a brief second as the aux system isolates itself and engine transfer is now over to the main system. Again, no, all normal engine indications and no faults enunciated. The last check that we need to do before takeoff is that of the aux fuel pump system. The aux fuel pump switch has three positions. It has on, auto, and test. In the auto position, the aux pump will turn on automatically if the fuel pressure drops below a predetermined value. To test it, we actually kill the main pump which decreases the fuel pressure. And we see if the aux pump turns on automatically. The test position is a spring-loaded position. You have to hold it in that position. We looked at the aux pump is now flashing, meaning that the automatic low pressure switch has turned on the pump to get our attention. And we notice that the engine continues to run and fuel pressure remains normal. That's a successful test. So it's just not a test of a simulation. It's actually an operational test. Next, we test the on or manual position, similar to all other aircraft auxiliary pumps, where it just turns the pump on uh, consistently. Notice the aux pump switch is now, again, lit in a steady, uh, a steady form, meaning that the pump has been turned on manually. And then we return back to the auto system. Now we know that the auto system works and we won't have to use the aux pump in the on position for takeoff and landings as it'll turn on automatically. If the test failed, then we would have to use 
the on position for all takeoff and landings just as you would in other aircraft. That completes our before takeoff checklist.